Hi, my wise astrology tribe, Cosmic Insight Astrology. I am your co-pilot, Christina. Today, I chose a subject to talk about, which is really close to my heart, and that is autism. I'm going to tell you why. Uh, first of all, because of I'm a special educational teacher, a drama teacher, and also a psychiatric nurse. So I worked with autistic children a lot in my life. Also because of my second born son uh, had a speech today. He didn't talk till three and a half years and uh, he been stemmed to be autistic by the school system, not by doctors, but by the school system. And I had a very hard time actually to with that situation. And it wasn't because I was in denial, but because I was actually absolutely sure my son doesn't have it and uh, you know finally we found out he has that kind of childhood apraxia when uh, a child is not capable to talk but he's still uh, capable to um, what is that he's still capable to um, for example show the subject like when I was asking where is the red fish uh, he was capable to show it for me but he couldn't say if I ask what is this, like it is a red fish. So, all right, that's why I wanted to talk about that. And uh, the other thing is because of I know there is a lot of uh, mother out there who is seeking for answers and who are scared the way I was scared. And uh, on the other hand, I also would like to tell you, even if the planetary aspect going to show that is tendency to have autism for your child. Um, I know it's difficult time and it will be very difficult to, to understand or work with it, but I truly believe we are capable to change a little bit, uh, even if right now there is no medical technology later on, it could be so never give up hope. And uh, always try, you know, whatever you can. I understand all mother tries that. But I also going to show you some remedies over here. Actually, what I used for my son. It might work for you. It might not, you know, but at least we try. All right. So first of all, if you have to, uh, when you understand a subject that you are talking about in astrology, you have to understand what is that subject about? So you have to understand actually what is autism in astrology. So you have to know the definition very well before you help anyone or before you seeking advice on your own in your child's chart. Um, so, you know, autism spectrum disorder, it's shortened ASD. It is a complex neurological and developmental disorder and uh, it is affecting your child acting and communication and the way your child is learning and the way your child is interacting with others so this is actually a disorder of the function of the brain and the nervous system um, like you know Many times uh, we have different kind of uh, autism and uh, the autistic spectrum disorder affecting every single individual on a different way. So no children is, is exactly the same or no symptoms are exactly the same. That's why they call it spectrum because the spectrum could be very mild or really heavy and very challenging. So the classic autism, the, this is the autistic disorder. And then you have the Asperger syndrome. And this is actually a milder version of the classic autism. And actually that is mostly affecting the social behaviors of the person. 
Uh, and you also have the atypical autism or psychoorganic syndrome, the post syndrome, we called it before, which is like uh, an autism Asperger syndrome. So that is, you have a lot of characteristic of the classic autism and it slowly go into the Asperger syndrome. So it's getting actually easier and easier by the, the years, you know, uh, if you have a child like that. So if you want to know about more about autism and if you are seeking for a good show to understand the atypical it is an amazing TV show, which is showing a teenager the way he's coping with, with difficulties through his autism. And, uh, and I love that show because it shows a lot of um, positive aspects, the way he's overcoming, uh, his, his challenging, and he is capable to go to college. So I, I, I just love that show. And the other one is the parenthood. Actually, that show is showing a very young, early age uh, autistic child and the way he finds uh, love in and, and um, like became obsessed with photography and fulfillment in photography. And then it shows another person who realizing, okay, uh, you know what, I might have been autistic, but back then they didn't know how to um, diagnose that situation, but I had similar symptoms. Okay, let's see what autism, what is the symptoms of autism? Because that's when we can actually interpret that and um, and uh, apply that in your astrology chart or your child's astrology chart. So definitely it is affecting uh, uh, your, the, your child communication and it is affecting the social behavior. So for example, communication, delay communication, they cannot explain themselves the day, way they want to, the language skills is really delayed. And, and, you know, even the vocabulary is very limited and very, very poor. Um, they um, only say a few words and they, they bubbling mostly. And then the social behavior, those children usually do not smile. They have a poor eye contact and they, they definitely prefer to play around. And uh, we call that actually the glass bubble syndromes when I was studying and I, I wrote my essay, my dissertation, my first one about autism and we called it the, the, bubble, the glass bubble syndrome because it looks like they are in an, an igloo, a glass igloo and they just don't hear you. They don't hear where, well, but they don't want to because of, you know, noises are really bothering them. They are very sensitive for noises. So that's why they rather to cut you out and they don't want to listen to you. So noises are very, very um, important. So it could be a trigger for them. And you know what? They also can have some kind of stereotypical behavior, flapping, for example, with hands, or, or you know, like, like swinging in the chair, that kind of uh, routines. Uh, so what else could be? What other behavior could be? Uh, well, they are, <laughs> you know, like... Um, I would say very Virgo or like, because they, they like everything in order. So, and you know, that is definitely Virgo uh, people who, who likes, uh, most of the time they like everything in order and clean. And uh, um, for example, the chair cannot be moved because they got used to the way it is. And, and if it's going to be moved, then they can have a major tantrum and, and a lot of resistance uh, 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 about, for example, change. So that's very hard for them. Okay, so autism actually is pretty common lately and uh, before it wasn't but lately maybe it's they do, really don't know why is that developmental disorder somebody says it is because of vaccine injuries and a lot of people actually experience friends of mine yes 
and uh, a lot of people because of you know we have a lot of food uh, it's really depleted with nutrition and also it's full of chemicals wrong stuff and all the poisons that we eat and it does affect our brain and the children's brain and you know whatever you ate when you were pregnant it's not like I'm saying, you were the, the, you have to be held accountable. Absolutely not. But you know, many times during also pregnancy, uh, we work with chemicals or, or you know, like like the baby work, what we eat and we didn't know it could affect the the fetus um, brain development as well. All right. Okay, let's talk about astrology here. So, what can be the significator of autism. For example, it could be ascendant is afflicted by Uranus or Mercury and Mars affected by Uranus or Neptune, but it has to be uh, something which is a bad aspect in astrology, a challenging aspect. So it could be affected by either opposition square or conjunction with a malefic. And it could be also when Mercury, it's actually, it's uh, in full position. And if Mercury is full position in Pisces and detriment in Sagittarius. So that could be and expected badly either with Uranus, Pluto, Saturn or Neptune or Mars. Uh, also, it could be any malefic planets are in the third house or aspected in a bad aspect of the Lord of third house. So also it could be malefic planets in the seventh house and malefic planets in the 11th house. Why? Because that one is one-on-one -on -one relationship, okay? And that one is your social circle. And Mercury is definitely your communication. So let's see right I know who is here, Albert Einstein. So I shared his chart because of uh, he had Asperger. He has autism, actually. And he started to talk at age, uh, at age uh, four and a half, right? And uh, yes, so... So he had autism, but he was also a genius. He had a very high IQ. So let's see, where is Mercury? Let's see Mercury first. Mercury is in Aries. Aries, okay, so he wanted to talk really fast, but he was delayed. His talking was delayed because it's conjunct with Saturn. Saturn is delayed. It's restriction. It's seas. It's pause. So pause on communication, delay on communication. It's sees and absolutely shows perfectly in his chart. And Mercury, is it affected badly with other things? Let me see. King Kong's with Uranus. Look at that. Uranus in third house, communication. Any malefic in third house also could be an indicator and anchor as for the uh, autism. Uranus could be genius, very high intelligent and really unique, uh, but also because aspected Mercury with the King Kongs with an in conjunction, which is a hard and challenging aspect, it's definitely the second, the third significator. All right. Okay. So, uh, what other indicators? Let's see the ascendant. Ascendant badly affected. Is it badly? So, we have a square. Look at that. We have a square with Neptune Saturn conjunction. That is the third indicators. All right. Okay, what S could be? So let's see the 11th, 7th house. Look, 7th house Mars, malefic in 7th house. So actually, he was frustrated in the relationship. He was angry because you see, Einstein was also misunderstood. It is like, uh, he was a genius and uh, his brain was a lot faster than he could talk. And, and because they didn't understand him, he got frustrated. Look, look, he just couldn't handle one-on-one -on -one relationship. It was difficult for him, okay? All right, let me see if Mars has any bad aspect. No, but it is an indicator, fourth one. 
Okay, let me see what else, 11th house. 11th house, we have Pluto 24 degrees. Pluto is uh, debilitating, so that is like definitely, uh, it is an aspect, it's a malefic planet in 11th house. And look, Pluto is 24 degrees, 26 degree of Taurus. We have Argol, the Medusa, who became evil because she got raped and punished for that to being raped. How evil is that? And since then, she was um, sent away from Pallas Athena's temple she, because she was a virgin before. And, and she became like the, the asteroid of, uh, so whoever looked at her, everybody became stoned. And, and yes, that is over here with Pluto it's in 11th house, actually, I would say he felt like, oh my God, I can't take that society. I can't belong from here. I, I, I rather die or something like that because of, he, he was very frustrated by that situation. And look, Pluto and Argo, all right, the two malefic, what is it doing? It is squaring with Jupiter. Jupiter is also intellect. It's the genius in us. It is the way we are learning, the higher education. Jupiter rules Sagittarius. And look at that, 27 degrees anyway. No, that's not Jupiter. Okay, that's okay. I'm, I'm sorry, no. So Jupiter um, in eighth house, he was in a pit. He was like, and look at that, Aquarius. So, so Aquarius ruled by Uranus and ruled by Saturn. So it's distance, Aquarius. And Jupiter over there, the intellectual are distance and feels like he's in a deep pit because of he is not understood. He, he thinks way deeper than other people. That's why the frustration is coming from. So, all right, there is a lot of indicator what I was talking about. Okay, let's see Elon Musk. I wanted to talk about Elon Musk because he also has an Asperger. He was talking about that. And let me see if we find any indicators over here. Okay, so he has an Aries rising, right? Let me see, rising, rising, rising. <sighs> but anyway, it's Aries, okay. He has a sun in Cancer and the moon in Virgo. Let's see, and I don't want to say anything crazy. Yes, here. Okay, so the indicators, look at the third house. Look at third house is Gemini. Gemini is communication. Third house is communication because ruled by Gemini. Look at Saturn there. Saturn is delay. So he also have an indicator here, delay in communication. Look at that. It's opposing what? It's opposing with Neptune and Jupiter conjunction. He also has Jupiter in eighth house. He felt in a deep pit, in, in a deep hole because he was misunderstood. And let's see, it is not in the same sign, but Jupiter, uh, Neptune for him actually on the cast of uh, Sag. So look at that. This conjunction is like, I'm foggy. So the early childhood could be like, I don't understand what I'm learning or I don't understand because I'm a lot deeper in the way I'm thinking than the way they are teaching me. So I'm very foggy with the information that I get. And that is Saturn. So it's delay. It's hard for me to study because the way they are teaching me, it's difficult. They, they cannot adapt to my learning ability. They're supposed to change. So that could be that here. All right, let's see other significators. Look at Mercury. Mercury in the fourth house. And actually look at the sun. So it's a combust. Why? It's 10 degrees away, all right? But it's still a combust because that is the orb. The sun orb is 17. Mercury orb is seven and a half. If you add it together and divide it two, so 10 degrees still, it's a wired uh, conjunction, but it's still a combust and conjunction. So the sun is shining through the child. The sun could be a male figure in the family. It could be the father figure. Perhaps the father was uh, very talkative or shining in his uh, work or, or in the family and talked 
always for his son, because the son, you see, was delayed in speech, wasn't understand, didn't understand the way he was learning, didn't understand how he can relate to studying. So the father talked for him. The father shined over the child. And let me see if this conjunction have any, look at that, perfectly fine. Uranus, look at Uranus. Uranus is also the genius over here, but Uranus is the seventh host. It's an indicator of social distance, of one-on-one -on -one relationship is not working fine. I'm actually hurt in one-on-one -on -one relationship because look at Chiron here, Chiron in the first house. So uh, that's myself. I don't have self-esteem. I'm wounded in my self-esteem and I can't relate to other people as the way they experience back to me too. And look at that T-square that is totally indicating like, all right, somebody is talking for me. Somebody is shining over me. Don't let me to talk the way I want to. And then Uranium, that is my uh, nervous system. And, you know, it's actually somehow um, not limited, but somehow compromised with that Chiron opposition. And Chiron also in a square with this... Uh, uh, Mercury. So definitely there is an other indicator for speech delay. So yes. Okay, so this is the two chart I wanted to show you. Um, because some some genius and also who had Asperger. And let's talk about some remedies. All right, if somebody has a child with severe autism, then, you know, let's pray for something in future uh, uh, which is in medical technology with gonna come through. I truly believe that because Uranus in Taurus representing medical technology going to be amazing. We might going to be already manipulate genes and then it could be actually helping with autism, cancer and other really difficult diseases. All right. But if you have... Uh, but you still can use those kind of remedies I'm going to tell you. So Mercury is the communication issue over here. So Mercury actually ruled by Tuesday. So you can have a prayer on Tuesdays to Mercury. But actually, Mercury, the vitamin B complex is ruled by Mercury. So you might want to apply or, you know, be complex, you cannot overdose because it, um, it um, exit with your urination. So you can have B complex for your child and you can actually maybe have a little bit more. So B complex could be really, really growth, great for your child. And Mercury related uh, crystals, the agat, and the tiger eye, but I would recommend blue and azure, either even turquoise stone and also blue agate, because of blue is associated with your communication, with your throat chakra, and it's elevate the energy over there. So it would be a great stone for your child if he, she can handle any necklaces. If not, then just put that in the pocket. They don't realize, you know, like you have to work with your child's needs. And, you know, every child is difficult and every autism, you know, from the mild to the very severe. So we have to work with that. All right. What did I do for my son? I did corneal sacra massage. I'm a massage therapist also, and I use corneal sacra massage on him uh, to enrich speech in him and encourage speech in him. I also did a lot of jumping exercise, which is having with the uh, limbic system, with the, which is actually helping and associated with speech. So you can do that if your child is capable to jump. As I said, all children are difficult. Well, I mean, different. All right. So what else could be like, like, you know, like, okay, so we talked about Agubat, Agat uh, or, or um, the stones and the B complex. So for example, fennel seed, it stimulates actually the communication chakra. 
So if your child likes the taste of fennel or likes pomegranate or likes celery juice, those are mercury related herbs and nutrition is um, nutrition. So you can use that uh, for them. Um, I also use something else and I have to tell you. So I used all the time uh, rosemary in the house. I had, I, 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 you know, I have my rosemary in the garden. I cut the rosemary down because it stimulates the brain. And uh, the other thing that I used and I gave my child, I did licorice. And it is also a mercury uh, related plant, but I give them the licorice uh, gummy and it helps with communication as well. And the other thing I wanted to mention that is colloidal gold. So colloidal gold, I came across with because my first bone had night terrors. And I was doing my research and I went crazy. I wanted to help him because I remember my own night terrors when I was very young. So I came across colloidal gold and I did my research and actually it elevates your IQ with 20 scores. And also it's really good to um, create an open gate between the universe and you. So you are capable to, you are more intuitive and you can have lucid dreams. And if you believe it or not, because it helps, helps your IQ, it does help with communication as well. And it does help us. So I'm still using Collider Gold with my whole family. Also, I have to mention, you know, like it's not related to autism, but it helps with joint pain, uh, pains and joint inflammation. And it also helps with viruses. It's good for viruses. All right, guys. So that is my little essay about autism. And uh, well, if you liked my uh, video, please don't forget to subscribe and push the like button. And if you would like to have a personal reading with me, then please check out my website, which is www.urbanwitch.org. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate your attention. And you have to know my intention is pure. And I truly hope I could help you. So have a nice day. Bye.